Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about Django model forms specifically for this article model. And really just how do we shortcut everything we've done so far in our view and in our form. Now there's a lot of different things about Django that you will learn as you build more projects. And that's actually the key here is not to try to memorize every little piece, but rather build more projects. And model forms actually help speed that process up a lot as we'll see in just a moment. So this class of article form, I'm just gonna go ahead and say article form old. And now we're gonna go ahead and create a model form. So we're gonna go ahead and do class article form still, that way I don't have to change the view input. And this is gonna be forms.model form, or really the view import, excuse me. And so now we wanna declare a model that this form is gonna use. And of course that model is from .models import article. Right, so the actual article model. And this actually might look a lot like admin.py and what we did there with the model admin. And there's a specific reason for that is because the model admin actually uses a model form by default, but it does it all for you. It does it by default when you actually register your model. And so now what we're gonna do is say class meta, and we're gonna declare the model is article. So a meta class in this case is just really describing other parts of the actual model form class. So what we wanna do here is we wanna declare our model and then we wanna declare the fields that we want in this model. So if we just said fields of title, that means it's only gonna render that single field. Now it's still important to designate what fields you want to have Otherwise, Django will not work properly. So we definitely want to declare it. Similar to like what we did with the original just standard Django form, we declared those fields. But now I just need to give the field name because in our model, we actually designed it in a way that already has a field type. Like the text field already has a field type. So going back in here, we can now use this as is. There's actually not a whole lot I need to change at this point. So I already have that title field and notice now when I render it, it's a big old text area. Um, but overall, it's still gonna work the same way as far as the form is concerned, which we can test with hello world, exclamation mark, hit create title. Uh-oh, we got a not null constraint found. So I actually do have an error, something that we do need to fix. But the problem here is because I don't actually have that content form or that content um, field in here. And so right here, I'm actually trying to create that content without the database allowing it to be empty. So I'm gonna talk about those defaults in the model in just a little bit. But the idea here is we absolutely need both of those fields. They are required with the defaults of how we have the models set up. So let's go ahead and try that again with our create method here. And again, notice that they are both text areas. That's crazy big. But we can go ahead and do hello world here and another try, okay? And then we can hit create article. And what do you know? It actually works almost identical to the other article. It's just rendered a little bit different. Now we could totally stop here because, well, not completely, maybe we would add the clean method in here. Um, but what we wanna do is go back into our view and how do we actually clean this up? And what model forms allow us to do is to circumvent having these three levels, right? So the form itself is now a model class or can be a model class. So what we can do is say object equals to form.save. And that's it, right? So that is now our article object. Wow, how cool is that? So dot save, that save method will only work on a model form because it's gonna be inferred that this data is gonna to go to that, mo that model and that data, well, we don't need to do anything else. We can just hit dot save and what do you know? It's gonna save that data. So let's go ahead and give that a shot now. And we'll go ahead and do create and yet another attempt. And then we hit create article and what do you know? There it is, right? And we can also verify by the IDs changing. That I think is actually really cool. It's one of those like shortcut things that it's just like, wow, now I don't have to write all of this stuff out. Are you serious? Look at that. That's pretty cool. That's a really, really simple way to do this. And one of the things you might be wondering is like, well, what if I actually don't want these context articles here? And I do wanna save that model 
and I want to change it just a little bit differently. So let's say for instance here, I want to come in and say, hello world and another one and hit create article. Okay. So before I go any further, let's actually jump in to the admin and take a look at this. Okay. So article, the one I just created was hello world. Okay. This form still says hello world. It still has all of that same data. And if I create it, create it, create it, create it. I hit it a few times. If I go back in the admin, whoa, that's not what I want to have happen. And this is actually where we can harken back to what we did originally with the form data where we initialized a form and then we grabbed the data itself. So in other words, I can actually come back into here, into this context, and I can initialize a new form. And this is just simply article form. Now, of course, I could put request dot post or none, uh, but that actually doesn't matter here because when we resubmit the form, it's actually gonna be handled by this form instance. So we can just leave it as an empty instance in here, save that, and this time it's actually gonna clear out that data. Hello world and another one, and we hit create article. Now it's clear, and so I'd have to do another one here and create that. Right, and again, we can verify this in the admin as well as to what is going on. Cool, so um, that's definitely a common thing that you might end up doing, especially if it's something other than writing articles. You would probably want to re-render the form, and that's just a quick and easy way to do it. But there's one thing that I've been hanging on for a while, which is you know the title being taken. We haven't actually done a proper validation for that. And so I'm just gonna do a quick and easy way to do this. Now, first off, we could do clean title again, or we could of course do clean content or really any other field name here, but I'm just gonna leave it in as simply clean. And then I'm gonna call it data being self.cleaned data, and we're gonna return that data. Now, of course, when we call it data here, it's just to distinguish um, the, well, just really to make things a little bit shorter and easier for us so we know what the form data is. It's just that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab that title. And of course it's data.get and title. Now what I'm gonna do is a query set lookup. So QS equals to title or rather article dot objects dot all and then dot filter title underscore underscore I contains equaling to, well, title. So this is a type of query set that's gonna filter down our entire database for this particular string that's coming in here. And I contains means that if it contains that, then it will actually say, well, this will actually have some values in here. So we can actually say if qs.exists, then we can do self.add error to the title field and say, um, well, we can use string substitution now and do title is taken is already in use okay so hopefully your your mind's going like wait 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 wait. how do i know about this well this is query set stuff and this is something we will definitely come back to a lot more of but there are more and more robust ways to actually search through the database this is just one of those examples and really i actually don't need this dot all here anymore i just need filter and this will actually filter things based off of that now, of course, we can also use content in here as well or in a different way, uh, but the idea is we're just gonna leave it nice and simple for us, and this query set is gonna find if there's anything in there, and if it exists, then it'll add this error, and we can verify whether or not things were saved right in here. So let's go ahead and give that a shot now, and I'm gonna go ahead and say hello world, and this working, question mark, and hit create article, Hello world is already in use, right? So that would be then please pick a different title or something along those lines. Please pick another title, okay? And we could use double quotes in here as well. We just have to do uh, escape them so it, it is a valid Python string still. And so let's go ahead and refresh and run that. And now it shows it right there, cool. And so yet again, this could be another error that's a form error altogether, or it's specifically to the field. This is just one of those examples where um, it kind of doesn't matter where it actually lives. I think the best place is to put it right next to the field itself, especially if you end up having really, really long fields, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, so that is model forms. Just a real quick recap as to what we did here is first of all, a long time ago, we created this model and it has two fields in it. We want users to be able to use those two fields in a automated fashion or as little as code as possible. So with that, we use a model form and that's this right here. Once we do that, we just need to render it out just like this and with our create method here and that's it. We can use this over and over again. Now, every once in a while, we might need to clean up that data to ensure that it doesn't already exist in the database or many, many other reasons to clean up the data, right? So perhaps you have a title that is offensive and you want to prevent that from happening, right? So, you know, contains bad words or words you don't want or whatever, right? So you could totally do stuff like that as well. Um, but of course, we definitely have the ability to do some minimal validation at this point, uh, which I think is really, really great. So this is again, one of those cases where model forms is something we'll use a lot. We'll use it over and over and over again. But now that we understand some model forms, we can actually use this to register a user with a built-in model form inside of Django. So that's what we'll do now.